this is George at UFC unfolding his creation and we're out here today in a, in a school field to talk about some of the science experiments that we did last night with moonlight 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 is a very fascinating thing I recently found out that the moonlight is actually colder than the moon shade so okay. the sunlight is hot and the sun shade is cool right if you're out on a stroll and you need someplace cool to sit, you sit in the shade, right? Well, we're finding out that the moon is exactly the opposite. If you're strolling and you're chilly and you need to warm up, sit in the shade. Okay, so what are some of the tools that we used last night to run these tests? Okay, well first we used a simple laser thermometer. Now this probably isn't the most accurate, um, but accurate enough for the tests that we did. We used a mirror magnifier that magnified the moonlight into a lens. We also used magnifying glasses and we also used candles. We'll talk about all of these in just a few seconds, minutes. And I also had a, uh, a box out here with uh, a two slit test so that we could see if we could break the moonlight up into waves and actually get it to project on the back of the box um, in a wave pattern and not just matter. So matter and, and so light is matter and waves. So I just wanted to go back to the basics with these tests since we're testing the moonlight and not the sunlight, just right back to the basics. So when I tested, when I took my laser pointer and I tested the light, it came out to be, at first it was between 58.2 degrees in the shade and 56.2 degrees in the light, in the moonlight, okay? I did it again and I came out at 56.7 in the moonlight and 59.2 in the shade all right i ran the test again a little bit later on in the evening and i got between 50.7 and 51.8 degrees in the shade and i got 47.9 to 47.5 degrees in the light okay so here we go we're out here late night doing some moon experiments uh moonlight experiments i should say We've got a big full moon tonight. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see, that's the moon right there. All right, so this is the moon shade. 58.2, 58.32 right there. We're gonna move in the moonlight. Immediately the temperature starts to go down. 56.2. 5 almost we'll go right back in here temperature immediately goes back up so moon shade is warmer than the moonlight the moonlight actually cools off which we're gonna do right back now because we're in the moonlight This is phenomenal. It means that the moonlight is actually cooler than the moon shade. Verified. Okay, okay, so I'm just going back to the basics of light and testing everything that we know. So uh, the first thing I did was set up the candle experiment to see if somehow the, the moon is drawing energy to equate for the cooling effect that it has. And so then I set up so a black and white paper to see if uh, the cooling effect would be distributed through the white and black see how the absorption of the light would take place uh, all right so <clears throat> we tried to tell the difference between the black light or the black paper and the white paper and it was just undeterminable no difference really at all just points of degrees and no consistency. Okay, so there's actually a gentleman by the name of Brian. He runs a channel, uh, Balls Out Physics. And uh, he was actually talking about thermodynamics and, uh, and the energy being drawn out of the candles and the candles possibly burning faster or slower in the moonlight. 
So I ran a, a dual experiment. I, I put uh, two candles in a box to protect it from the wind. And then I put two candles actually in a glass container so the moonlight could go through it, but the wind didn't affect it as much. The top was off, so it affected it very, very minimally. The candles that burned in the light burnt absolutely perfectly consistent. It was 1 16th um, off over a course of four and a half hours. Now I burnt the dark ones exactly the same amount of time and the results were drastically different. I had one candle that was shorter than the ones that were burned in the light and I had one candle that was a lot longer. So unfortunately I'm gonna have to say that although even the overall length of the dark is longer than the average or I should say the average length of the dark is longer than the average length of the light which supports the hypothesis but I don't think it was conclusive enough to make any any uh, conclusions off of this test I believe that we can actually do the same types of experiments with cooling metal so if we take two pieces of metal that are identical in size and they're identical temperature and you put one on a surface in the shade in the moon shade and one on the surface in the moonlight and you test those five minutes later you should be able to determine the rate of diffusion of the heat in the atmosphere and thereby determine whether uh, thermodynamics takes place uh, more uh, heavily and more active in the moonlight than in the moon shade so I, I think that we should uh, maybe start looking at those types of experiments we then took the moonlight and we reflected it at a surface and magnified it and we began to test what the magnified moonlight did and surprisingly there were no test results it was completely uh, void there were no temperature differences between normal moonlight and magnified moonlight now th this completely puzzles me I would like other people to feed to give me some feedback if they've done anything like this and magnified the moonlight and and got some results I would really like to hear back I also brought out a lens to break the moonlight to see if it was a full spectrum light or not but um, I actually had some colored paper out there and I could um, I brought out a spectrum of colors to see if we could recognize the colors under the moonlight and I can red yellow blue and green can be clearly identified with in in the moonlight plain is not quite plain as day but plain in the moonlight so the moonlight is actually a full spectrum light and I know some of these tests are basics but let's just get back to the basics and start at the ground and work our way back up the other experiment that I did was the dual slit test so this is such a famous test with light to prove that light is a wave well, I brought the box out. I actually made it yesterday. I used it in the sunlight and it breaks the wave into way or breaks the light into waves, projecting it on the back of the screen. When I did it in the moonlight, the light didn't break. Now, does this mean that moonlight's not a wave? I don't think so. I, I, I think that we should be careful making wild conclusions just based off one test. The moonlight's very dim and difficult to test and I almost think that it should be magnified um, and then tried to split into a wave to see the results a little bit better. So these are my results with my moonlight testing. Some of the implications that this could have with the creation model is I know the crystalline firmament has some problems because of the heating aspect. Well, if the moon is actually proven to have a cooling effect on the earth, this could contribute to the cooling off of the earth in the pre-flood world. Thanks. This is George from UFC. This is all I have. Stay straight in Christ. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. <laughs> Funny to me.